Good morning, church. So glad you can join me on this um, beautiful weekend as we head into a Sunday school lesson that begins another uh, four or five week study as we make our way to Easter Sunday. The name of this section is The Word and the Cross, which fits perfectly with what we're doing at church because at church, uh, the name of our theme for this season is Journey to the Cross. And so when we think about going to Easter and thinking about the 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 cross, we think about this time as being very intentional about our discipleship. How do we grow deeply or deeper as be, being Christ followers? And I know at church, we've talked for the last two months about what it means to be Christ's church, and now we're talking about what it means to be Christ's followers. And this section uh, in our Sunday School Formations lesson really also reinforces uh, the, the cross and um, other aspects of, of becoming disciples. The first lesson, uh, today's lesson, comes from Mark 4, 2 through 20. It is on the, it's the parable of the sower, or the parable of the soils, however you want to call it. We'll talk about that in a minute. So it's Mark 4, 2 through 20. And this is a really good place to start in this uh, season because it talks about being receptive and open to God's word and how we allow that word to grow in our heart to produce fruit uh, of obedience and righteousness that we might follow Christ, again, all the way to the cross and the empty tomb. Let's say a quick word of prayer, and then we'll go through the lesson. Lord, we thank you for this morning. We ask that you'll bless this time, bless our church, and bless the, uh, the lesson that we might find in it both a challenge and encouragement uh, and, the call, and to hear Christ's call uh, to be stewards of the seeds and the word that you have given us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's jump into it. Mark 4, 2 through 20. I'm going to read the whole parable in full and then uh, just basically give you a way to think about the parable uh, that you might not have thought about before. All right. He began to teach them, Jesus began to teach them many things in parables. And in his teaching, he said to them, listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell on the path and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on rocky ground where it did not have much soil and it sprang up quickly since it had no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew and choked it, and it yielded no grain. Other seed fell into good soil and brought forth grain, growing up, increasing, and yielding thirty, sixty, and a hundredfold. Jesus said, Let anyone with ears to hear listen. When he was alone, those who were around him, along with the twelve, asked him about the parables. And he said to them, To you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God, but for those outside, everything comes in parables, in order that they may indeed look, but not perceive, and may indeed listen, but not understand, so that they may not turn again and be forgiven. So, And he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? Then how will you understand all parables? The sower sows the word. These are the ones in the path where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan immediately comes and takes it away, the word that is sown in them. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground. When they hear the word, they immediately receive it with joy. But they have no root and endure only for a while. Then, when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are, of the, are those sown among the thorns. These are the ones who hear the word. But the cares of the world and the lure of wealth and the desire of things to come uh, come in and choke the world, and it yields nothing. And these are the ones sown on good soil. They hear the word <laughs> and accept it and bear fruit thirty and sixty and a hundredfold. A lot of things happening in this, this parable, and I encourage you to read it twice. You can pause the video if you need to. But one of the things that we, we address is what is Mark getting at as a whole in this gospel? Because if we don't understand Mark as a whole, it's hard to understand this. Uh, Mark's gospel is really a gospel for the church. <coughs> it instructs who the church is called to be, how the church understands Jesus as the Messiah, the Son of God, how the church seeks to be a messenger of the good news, the message of God's victory in Christ, and how the church ought to live faithfully and in deep trust in God. So you say, well, how is that different than the other Gospels? Well, we can say Matthew. Matthew's focus is on the teachings and ministry of Christ. Luke's focus is on the mission of Christ, reaching out to the ends of the world, as he writes Luke and Acts. John's Gospel is for the Spirit-filled Christian who is encouraged to believe in Christ, and to be born again. And Mark's gospel, the focus is on the church and who the church is called to be as a result of following Christ. So this parable, which is at the beginning of the parable, 
at the beginning of Jesus' teaching is really, really asks what kind of soil will the church be? Will we be those who, under, who, who don't understand and live in darkness and ignorance and refuse to follow Christ? Or will we be shallow, uh, uh, only uh, half-hearted? Will we be hypocrites where we have a mask of joy on the one hand but really just do our own thing uh, on the other? Or will we be that soil that gives a harvest, a plentiful harvest, a bountiful harvest uh, for, for the kingdom of God? He says, Jesus says here, uh, verse 11, to you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God, and that you is plural. So to the church, it has been given the kingdom of God, and the kingdom is pitched at something that we receive, that grows, uh, that, that flourishes in the midst of those who call Christ Lord. Uh, one of the things to, to, another way to read this parable is to ask, what should we call the parable? And what is the parable about? And there are three different options to really look at what this parable is all about. One is, we can see it as the parable of the soils. So a lot of people say this is the parable of the sower, but the parable of the soils. <coughs> Here we see that there are different soils. There's the rocky soil, shallow. There's the, the thorns. Uh, there's the soil on the ground where the birds come, and a vulnerable soil where, where it doesn't uh, immerse the seed. So the bird comes and, and takes the seed away, as it says, Satan takes the seed away. And of course, there's the good soil, the rich soil. So one question to ask when we read this parable is, what soil are you? When you're receiving God's word, when you're living a Christ-shaped, Christ-centered life, is it shallow? Is it hypocritical? Do you allow Satan to come in and just root out the word of God and pluck and pick at you like a bird picks uh, at its prey. I'm reminded of that <laughs> old Hitchcock movie, The Birds. It was really scary when I watched it when I was young. It used to scare the, it used to scare the, uh, the tar out of me. And um, and I and I see Satan. You know, Satan doesn't take big chunks out of our life. He usually, just picks and picks and picks until we lose ourselves uh, and get caught up in the sin that that so easily ensnares us. Um, so, what kind of soil are we? That's one question. And I think that requires prayer. How do we receive the word and how do we live out the word? How does the word bear fruit in our life? <clears throat> and you see that the good soil produces an abundance of harvest bountifully. It's not just it gives harvest. It's the, 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 the language, Jesus builds that language of the good soil. It says it grows up, it increases, it yields. And then it gives another threefold kind of, uh, picture and, and portrait of how it yields. 30 and 60 and 100 fold. So it's an exponential harvest of growth, of life, of continual movement deeper into uh, growing in Christ. So are you the good soil or a shallow soil? A soil that a soil in which seeds find itself among the thorns in which you're a person that is critical or has a lot of thorns in your life that you need to prune and weed? It's up to you. Another way to look at the parable is to say that this is the parable of the seeds. Uh, Jesus says that the seeds are the word of God, and so we see that the seed is spread plentifully, that there is adequate access to the word of God, that the seeds have in them the, the grain and the, the nutrients that we need to live and to grow harvest in our life. So we could say rightly that this is the parable of the seed, noting that the word of God is something that the Holy Spirit plants in us and brings to full growth in our life as we obey God's word. Many times in scripture, I encourage you to read, for instance, John 14. It talks about how Jesus, when he uh, is going to ascend with his Father, will give us the spirit of truth who will teach us the ways of Jesus, the commands of Jesus, and will rightly speak to our life the application of his word. But we need to spend time in his word. So God makes the seed of his word available, accessible. But where do we hinder either receiving that word or spending time in God's word to truly feast on God's word? We... That was the sermon from last week. If you catch the sermon uh, on our YouTube channel or on our um, uh, on our website or Facebook page from last week, it talks about focusing on God's word. Where do we need to focus on God's word? And then the last thing we can talk about for this parable is that this is the parable of the sower. The sower shows a almost a a a carelessness. I don't want to say carelessness, but a a bountiful, generous sowing of seed. 
Um, one of the things that we have to note is that seed is expensive, so it's not that you can just throw it wherever you want. Usually, back in the day, because seeds were not plant, were, were, were costly, you would have to plant the seeds intentionally in good soil. But what we find here is a sower who is generous and who is abounding in, in hope and optimism and spreading the seed wherever it lands. And the seed falls in places where we don't expect it to fall. And the sower sows in places where we don't expect it to sow. And so the, the farmer, the gardener here is not, is not stuck within the, the, the good soil. He's not stuck on just planting in the good soil. He wants to plant the seed everywhere so that it might take root in the least in places that are unexpected. Now this is twofold. This shows us the grace, the bountiful grace and mercy of God who is abundant in offering us the gift of salvation, the gift of Jesus Christ, that he casts the message of God's good news wherever it goes. And, and God is not, does not discriminate of where that word falls. God does, does, uh, see, is, is a hopeful, generous sower of seeds. Um, and, and thank goodness he is, or else maybe I wouldn't be here or you wouldn't be here. I think about where you where you were in your life when Christ found you and, and brought about salvation in your life. You might have been in the, the worst place ever. But thanks be to God and God's grace and mercy to search us out, even when we're in the, the most terrible, loneliest, most sinful places that we can find each other. But at the same time, we are called to sow the word. Remember, we are messengers of God. And God gives us the gift of the word so that we can share with others. But how many times do we discriminate on who we talk to about Jesus or share God's word? Maybe we think that we shouldn't share God's word with this person because they're critical or they, they, they don't want to talk about faith or religion or they don't want to uh, talk about things of God. And we discriminate. And rather than just sowing the seed, even if it's on shallow ground, we're too fearful to even let go of the seed in the first place. And so we don't sow. We keep it to ourselves or we just focus on the good soil because we want results rather than just following God's good footsteps and expressing God's ever expanding love and grace to a world in need. But too often we find ourselves stuck in that row like a farmer, kind of just stuck in the rows, planting seeds where we know it'll grow rather than being bountifully, abundantly merciful and filled with grace, revealing God's grace in, a, in, in an abandoning our fear to welcome all of those who need to hear the word of God. Who do you welcome into your life? Who are you inviting to be in your life? How are you inviting people to walk alongside you to experience the harvest and the good fruit of, your, of faith in your life that you might share that fruit of good news with others? So the parable of the sower tell, teaches us something about God and informs us about who we should be when we share God's word with others? Are we sharing God's abounding, abundant grace, unyielding grace that gives a harvest for plentiful? Well, thank you for joining me today. I hope that you like and subscribe, share with friends, and we hope to see you next week as we continue our journey to the cross. I'll just give you a little heads up. Next week, it talks also uh, about another uh, part of the parable. It continues chapter four, it talks about a lamp being a light to the world. And continues with a, a farmer's metaphor of the mystery and the, the growth of the kingdom of God. Again, the mystery of the kingdom of God planting itself and growing in places where we don't expect. When you go out into the world today as you do your things, look in unexpected, look to find God in unexpected places. Have a wonderful day.